In this section, we're going to go into a deeper overview for Green Button. I'd like to give some acknowledgement here to my co-lead on the Internex Smart Grid Interoperability Administrator team, uh, who has helped with many of the technical details that I'm going to talk about today. So let's talk about what is Green Button again, just to recap. There's the vision that there's a collaboration and inspiration using voluntary adoption of industry standards. So here, the federal government is helping to initiate a call to action, but the response to this and the driving force for this effort is within private industry. Working very quickly, we were able to get from concept to specification to early adopter implementations in a very short three months for the initial California adopters and this is spreading very quickly beyond that to hopefully become a full national effort. A lot of progress has been made since those early implementers in California. From our celebration on January 18th, 2012 in California, many different events have occurred to support Green Button. For example, one of the important aspects to accompany Green Button data since we're giving the download to the customers from the secure website of their utility, we're also giving the consumer access to this data, but we want to support them to be able to share that data with third-party web app developers and others, but we also want to put in place ways to treat the privacy of that data. To support the privacy, Department of Energy held a smart grid privacy workshop in late January. In addition, there's a lot of interest in this field from both the federal and state regulators who regulate the utilities that will be implementing Green Button. These regulators we've done a lot of outreach for through the FERC NARUC Smart Response Collaborative. FERC is the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission and NARUC is the National Association of Regulatory Utility Commissions across all the different states. In addition, as I mentioned, there's a lot of industry leadership of these activities. One of the important efforts is within the UCA IUG, the Open SG, Open Automated Data Exchange, Open ADE Task Force. And they've been having meetings to structure activities to support Green Button. And for web app developers and utility implementers and others, we held a deep dive on February 29th to give a lot more of the information that we're sharing with you today. In addition, the Department of Energy has done a great job of outreach to its stakeholders in support of Green Button and has worked very closely with NIST as we've moved this program forward together with the Office of Science and Technology Policy. DOE had a webinar for its grants recipients to share information about Green Button and in addition has a, a, a smart grid data access funding opportunity announcement which closed on March 1st. Following the success that we've had, there have been a lot of interest expressed by other utilities. There was a White House CEO meeting held together with Secretary Chu of the Department of Energy as well as uh, the President's Science Advisor John Holdren and others. And through that meeting, there was additional utility commitments made to Green Button. So with these additional utility commitments, the number of consumers with access to Green Button in the future is growing dramatically, up to approximately 27 million people by the end of 2012. With this kind of progress, we're supporting it with additional activities within the Smart Grid Interoperability Panel with a priority action plan designed to support Green Button. And also through the Apps for Energy Comp Challenge, we are you know, giving inf additional information to the web app community. One of the things that we've done in coordination with the White House event was to update the greenbuttondata.org website to make it more consumer friendly and facing. But we also wanted to make sure that the website was useful to the developer community as well. So this is a good entry portal for consumers to learn more about Green Button data. In addition, there's a special developers web page at www.greenbuttondata.org slash greendevelop.html to specifically support application developers for Green Button. If we look at some of the reasons why Green Button is of interest to all of these different players, from the consumer point of view, the energy usage information is the feedback mechanism for many of the decisions they make about energy use in their home. From the utilities point of view, Green Button provides a well-established specification to support their deployment of capabilities and helps to create an interface to encourage value-added services. 
So it's basically a way for them to continue their communications with customers and provide information in a standardized, nationally recognized form. For regulators, Green Button has a lot of attraction because it helps to free up the data and makes available information to consumers and third parties to help benefit from the significant investments made in the smart grid. From the implementer's point of view, there's a lot of benefit of having a single interface that web developers can use to implement Green Button data and applications and allow that to be supporting a, an ecosystem of, of products. And finally, we view this as a ecosystem of goods and services by creating the mechanisms for this data to be transmitted to consumers and then retransmitted to third-party app developers to provide value-added services. There are many new applications that we haven't even thought of yet that could be developed through integration of this data with other data, such as through the Apps for Energy contest. From a consumer perspective, they need to know what information they have available to support their decision-making process. And this can take many different forms here. If they can get this information, either from the utility backend systems, such as, as available in interval data, perhaps a day later than the actual use, hourly interval data, they're able to then have a picture of the energy use in their home and make decisions and upgrades and employ third parties to get additional value from that data and then use it to support their decisions and then also have a feedback loop to see the results of their decisions. The Green Button Vision supports many different types of equipment that would be useful to have to communicate this kind of feedback to consumers. And this feedback could be in everything from a usage profile, so an understanding of the types of energy use that you have, your overall usage so that you could set metrics and compare your usage to them, and also have ability to link to the cost of the usage to make the usage real for you as the consumer. With this data available for these different products, it enables value-added services such as mashing up this data together with other data, such as environmental-based data or residential building type information or climate data or all different sorts of data that can be brought together to provide additional insight and value into your energy usage information. I've talked about Green Button and it's been an overnight success, but I wanted to let you know that there was a lot of standardization work that went into this. Over many years, there was a concerted effort in the standards development communities to provide the basis for energy usage information standardization. Going back several years, there were efforts made to organize industry to help develop this energy usage information and working through a variety of efforts, we've made great progress. And I'm, in the next few slides, I'm going to dive into a little bit of this, but I wanted to let you know that there are many different folks involved in supporting this effort. And this slide shows some of the key players that were there early on, as well as the progress that we've made over the past few years. I mentioned the Smart Grid Interoperability Panel, and I wanted to explain how the work within the SGIP had helped to inspire the Green Button format. With all of these efforts that I had mentioned from the different players in energy usage information, at the start of the NIST effort, it was recognized that energy usage information was very important to support the smart grid. A priority action plan number 10 that was formed at the start of the smart grid interoperability panel was designed to facilitate the standardization. And working through the North American Energy Standards Board, a particular standard, the PAP-10 REQ-18, WEQ-19 standard was developed in December of 2010. And this standard was an information model standard able to inform other standards efforts and provide a common basis for energy usage information. One of the areas that picked up this original NASB PAP-10 standard was also within NASB, the North American Energy Standards Board, the Energy Services Provider Interface. And this forms much of the standardization basis for Green Button. So this was taking the good work of the UCA IUG, it's Open ADE, Open Automated Data Exchange, which was 
interested in requirements for third parties to gain access to utility data. And working with that group, as well as NASB, there was a standard energy services provider interface which put the original energy usage standard into action. It has all of these different parts that we'll go into in more detail in a later section. Together, this standard provides a flexible file format for Green Button based on these ratified standards. And the initial implementations of Green Button are narrowing in on a specific subset of these standards for its initial realization. On this slide, I provide a very simple cheat sheet for all of the different standards efforts and what their importance is to Green Button. So it talks about OpenADE, the Open Automated Data Exchange, which is a group of the UCA IUG, which focused on requirements and specifications for the delivery of usage information to third parties and the various authentication handshakes that have to occur to enable that exchange. PAP10 is the initial seed standard which pulled together different efforts all interested in energy usage information and came up with a common data model to support this work. NASB SB, the Energy Services Provider Interface, is the standard that satisfies the requirements laid out by OpenADE and incorporates the data model from the PAP10 energy usage information to make this a reality. And Green Button is the file format subset of SB that provides the energy usage information to the consumer via a website. All of this work has been important to get Green Button off the mark with a quick demonstration of its capabilities, working with the early adopters. But it's a much bigger goal to support a sustained Green Button infused ecosystem. We've made a great start, but we have a lot of work to do. The benefits of having a fully fledged effort to support Green Button are that you'll have a variety of benefits that drive adoption. And by putting work into minimizing those barriers, we'll get broader uptake of Green Button data by various communities and then increase its value to the public. If you look at three key components to drive interoperability and spread of Green Button, we have continued work on the standards. We have a vibrant user group to help with the testing and certification aspects to help ensure consistency of experience from consumers using Green Button. And we also want to support the community with reference implementations to help support the implementations. Here are some of the key ways that we want to do this and how they link together. There's the standards component, there's the vibrant user community, as well as supporting the reference implementations. By putting effort into helping to infuse the interoperability into these pieces from the very beginning, we help all of the community and the developers implement Green Button faster. So that concludes the Green Button overview section. And in the next section, we're going to go into a deeper dive into the technical details.